Welcome to the Pyramid Insider. I'm Tyler Patner. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Umarex Gauntlet 2 in 30 caliber. Before we dive into the Gauntlet 230 caliber, I want to ask you guys to do us a favor, all right? We're getting hit hard by YouTube right now. They don't like us for some reason. I don't know why, but you guys are the answer, and gals if you're watching out there. If you can like, comment on this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. We'd appreciate it a ton. It helps us tremendously and helps us spread the good news of air guns. Now, let's get into it. So the Gauntlet 2 and 30 caliber, obviously the Gauntlet 2 is a platform not new to us here. It's been on the market for around four or five months now uh, and has done quite well in 22 and 25, but Umarex wanted to step their game up and bring this into a more mid-bore, big-bore category with the 30 cal. And this is very interesting because it's the first time we've seen what is thought of as a budget air gun in this 30 caliber. So we're gonna see how this does today, but I'm expecting good things. Now we've done a full review of the Gauntlet 2 in the past, but taking a look at this 30 caliber, there are a few key differences I do want to let you guys know about up front. Now, obviously a lot of the same stuff. You still have the adjustable stock, a lot of M-lock slots, regulated system, all of those things, but some of the specs have changed, so let's go over them now. At the front of the gun, we have a fully shrouded barrel, but what's different about the 30 caliber is that Umarex has gone ahead and added a half inch uh, UNF threading here, so one half by 20, so you can easily add a moderator, and that's gonna be necessary. You're talking about a 100 foot pound gun here with this 30 caliber, it's gonna be way louder than the 22 and 25, so you're definitely gonna wanna add something on the end if noise is a consideration for you. A Donnie FL Ronin is gonna be right at home on this gun and perform very well. Now moving down from our barrel shroud here, we do have the same 24 cubic inch bottle. Uh, you still have your quick disconnect fill fitting. The big difference here is the reg pressure. So the output pressure on the 30 caliber is 2800 PSI. That's way higher than the 2100 and the 1900 of the 25 and the 22 caliber. Now because of that, you're probably going to want to pick up a personal compressor if you don't already have a fill source uh, because this thing is going to use a lot more air than its 22 and 25 counterparts. Uh, not a bad thing. They're rating it right around 24, 25 shots per fill. Obviously, we're going to test that for you, but something to know going in at that 4,500 PSI fill pressure with that higher reg pressure, less shots, you're going to eat up more air if you're running off of a tank. And for those of you hand pumping, this is going to be a lot of pumping. Moving back to the breach of the rifle, the biggest departure here is that we have a machined on dovetail Picatinny Weaver combo rail. So this will accommodate all of your mounts, but unlike the Gauntlet 2 we've reviewed before, you do not have those set screws holding this top rail portion on. This is all one piece. I like that a lot. This is going to be way more solid for you, especially for those of you that are looking to get into some of that 100 yard bench rest shooting. This is going to be a better option for you, not just because it's a 30 caliber, but because this breech block is all one piece. Now, speaking of the breach, we do have a 30 caliber specific magazine, of course. This is seven rounds in 30 caliber, and the gun comes with two of them. The only pellet this will not fit that I've encountered so far are the Predator Polymags. Other than that, your JSB Hades, your JSB uh, 44 grains, 50 grains, everything runs fine. The slugs run well also uh, that we've tested, but those Predator Polymags are going to be a no-go for you. So everything from here back is exactly the same. We'll run through it really quickly for you. We have that enlarged bolt action, super easy to operate. I've said this before, you wanna get your thumb at the back of the action, go ahead, grab this with a couple fingers and pull it back to cock it. That's gonna be the easiest way. If you try and run this like a standard bolt action without putting your hand at the back there, you're gonna run into a little bit more difficulty. I will say this was no more difficult to operate than the 22s or 25s that we've shot before. Uh, so the cocking effort seems still pretty reasonable uh, by comparison to those lower calibers, even though you're talking about a much more powerful platform with the 30. Procedure for decocking this is the exact same. You just hold that bolt at the rear, you go ahead, pull the trigger, and you hear it click, and uh, you are all good to go now, all safe. Safety here, just flip it back, that is safe. Coming forward, that's hot and ready to go. Uh, you do have a hammer spring adjustment here at the back of the stock, uh, so that will allow you some adjustment of the gun there. Uh, not something you have to mess with if you don't want to, but if you wanna play with your speed a little bit, you certainly can. And of course, at the very back of the stock, we do have an adjustable cheek piece. I don't have it adjusted for me, it works just fine, but for you, your mileage may vary depending on how you set up your scope. Uh, the other thing I should mention really 
really quick is the QD sling mount here at the back of the action. Uh, you are going to have to mount something into one of these M-Lock slots forward if you want to have a two-point sling. Uh, but if you did want to run a single point, you certainly could do that out of the back here. Uh, and then, of course, you know, the stock is standard gauntlet. We have our uh, degassing port here. You just pop that cover out and you are good to degas it with the tool that's included. Other than that, this is all standard gauntlet too. So let's get to the important stuff, head out to the range and see how it performs. So running the Gauntlet 30 at 45 yards indoors here, so no wind to contend with. Uh, we ran pretty much everything we have in 30 caliber. The Predator Poly Mags don't fit in the mag, but pretty much everything else, including one you guys haven't seen yet. We'll get to that in a minute. But starting with the 44 grain JSBs, now uh, inch and a quarter group, not very good for what the Gauntlets, uh, for those of you that already own them and, and you've seen our other reviews, this is not really up to standard for a Gauntlet, but that is okay. Uh, running those FX hybrids. Now this is under an inch, all seven shots, a full mag there. Uh, seven eighths inch group there for seven shots not bad certainly good enough to get the job done at 50 yards uh, but our next up is the new JSB knockout 30 cal which you guys haven't seen yet we don't even have them on the website but we got some samples here to use for this review three quarters of an inch so the gauntlet two in this 30 caliber is definitely liking the heavier stuff and as ex as shown here by those 50 grain JSBs a 5 8 inch seven shot group there at 45 yards. This is very solid accuracy, great stuff, and exactly what we've come to expect out of the Gauntlet 2 platform. So let's break down these chronograph numbers. We went ahead and chronographed both the JSB 50 grain pellets and the FX hybrid slugs. Those FX hybrid slugs are pushing a thousand feet per second. That's exactly what the gun's rated at. Uh, and you're doing so over 24, 25 shots perfectly within a nice tight spread. You're talking about 12 feet per second, just a two foot per second standard deviation. These are really phenomenal numbers. And again, 99 foot pounds of energy. This is a ton of power. And moving on down to those pellets, they did shoot a little bit better for us going 969 feet a second, right around 970, 104 foot pounds on average. You are talking about just as tight of an extreme spread and just as good of a standard deviation as with the slugs. Overall, the chronograph numbers look really good. Not a ton of shots, but very good consistency. If you're looking for a long range gun and don't want to break the bank, this is going to do it for you. Let's wrap up the Gauntlet 2 in this 30 caliber. I really like what Umarex has done here, uh, not just bringing the gun out in a 30 caliber, but making it a very powerful option. This is gonna be a great Predator gun in addition to shooting those longer distances, even in competition, if that's what you wanna do. Personally, my only gripes are obviously the noise, but they've given you the ability to quiet it down with half inch UNF threads on the end of the shroud uh, and the trigger. Th those are my only two gripes, guys. Kind of the trigger is the same one as it always is, but it is adjustable. So, you know, in a gun in this price range, I'm not expecting match grade precision, and this is done out of the box. So I know I can adjust it and make it better for me, and you guys can do the same at home. Uh, but the enhancements that they've made to this 30 caliber in specific are really nice. Uh, it's definitely one that if you are looking to stretch your legs, go a little bit further and 25 is not doing it for you, or you want to get something that's going to hit maybe medium sized game with real authority, this gun, this Gauntlet 2 and 30 cal is going to do it for you. And it's absolutely one that you guys need to have your eye on if you're in the market for a new PCP this year. For The Insider, I'm Tyler Patner. As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We appreciate it a ton. Thank you guys for watching. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and we'll see you next time.